Hey guys and welcome back to Rich Reviews and welcome to the seventh in the series of me documenting my ownership of my 1997 Porsche 911 Type 993S. If you haven't seen the previous videos then please look below you'll see the links there for all six of the previous episodes make sure while you're there click the subscribe please click the notifications for all videos so that you'll get notified of all future incoming videos so today we're going to talk about the 10 features slash quirks of the 993 911s the last of the air cooled 911s So the first item is it's air-cooled. This is the last air-cooled 911 that was ever produced. Not this particular vehicle, although it was very close. It was year 1997 that this was made. And it was 1997 when the last 911s were produced. Some of them were registered, as I said in one of my previous videos. Some of them were registered in 1998, but they were actually manufactured in 1997. So if you come around to the back, you take a look at the engine. Okay, so the engine is cooled via fins that are designed onto the actual engine block and engine cylinder head it might just be the cylinder heads where the fins exist and these fins allow heat to be dissipated now to assist in that dissipation of heat there's a fan that's driven off the crankshaft and this fan drives cooled air over the actual fins of the engine via the cowling so the cowling enforces and encapsulates the fins of the engine and allows the cooled air to be captured and retained within that area so as it cools the engine in addition the engine is cooled by oil even though it's not mentioned as it's oil cooled but the fact is that substantial amount of the cooling is provided by the heat being dissipated in the oil and the next feature is the rear weight bias the 911 has the engine sitting rear of the axle this is very rare and provides a very much a rear weight distribution the early air called 911s were known for the pendulum effect where if you're coming into a corner and you're lifted off early the car would actually switch round and you'd end up going into a hedge perceivably that was always the joke that was used but it, it did actually happen at times because the, the mass of the engine switching round as you lifted would pendulum the car around and you'd be going backwards very quickly they overcame that issue substantially by engineering it out implementing a multi-link suspension that was subsequently incorporated into the 996 model. The reason why the weight distribution is across the rear axle or hanging out of the rear axle in effect is of course because as I said the engine sits behind the actual axle. Now whereas a mid-engine vehicle the engine sits in front of the axle on the 911s it sits behind the axle therefore the weight perceivably is in the worst possible area. Now a major benefit of a rear weight BIOS is that when you're coming out of corners, and this is one of the major benefits of having the weight hanging out the back of a 911, in effect right over the rear axle, is that when you're accelerating out of corners, it gives you great traction because you've got the weight pushing down on the rear wheel so you can really accelerate hard without the wheel spinning. So the common way to drive a 911 fast is to do all your braking as you're coming into a corner, and then as you go around the corner, you can accelerate early very hard because you'll have the weight distribution right on the rear axle to be able to accelerate out hard of that corner um, which is a substantial benefit over most other cars so the next item I want to talk to you about is the wide body of the 911 type 993 Now the 993 was well known to have a very widened set of rear hips to cover and to encompass the rear axle. There was two versions of the body that were produced for the 993, the NB and the WB. Those in effect are acronyms for narrow bodied and wide bodied. The wide body was implemented for the Carrera 4S, the Carrera Turbo and the Carrera 2S. Now the, the wide body was first introduced with a turbo and it, the reason why the rear arches were designed that way was to incorporate the extra width in the rear axle. The rear axle was made wider for the turbo because of the four wheel drive system that was implemented and it needed to push the axle out wider. Therefore, they had to incorporate that size obviously in the arches. Now that wide body was, was very much loved. It was carried over into the 4S model, which implemented the same drivetrain as the turbo, but was naturally aspirated. And the 2S, which actually incorporated the narrow bodies engineering, but the wide body of the turbo. This is the rarest example of those wide bodies 
been the 2S, only one of 255. So this is only one of 255 right-hand drive, wide body Carrera S's that exist in the UK. Now the next feature is Varia RAM. Varia RAM was introduced on the 993 in 1995 on the RS model. It was subsequently introduced onto the standard 993 models in 1996. Varia RAM is implemented below 5000 RPM and it implements airflow charging using the Helmholtz resonance feature to increase airflow into the inlet manifold which in turn increases power. Next we move on to the wipers. You can always tell which hand drive a 993 is because the wipers always park on the driver's side. So as here you can see clearly this is a right hand drive vehicle, the wipers are parked on the right hand side. Now also what is missed by many people and is actually often missing from the car, to keep the wipers separated because otherwise they would clang together while they're actually in use, there is a little separator here which is often missing from many 993s which actually prevents the wipers from banging together. Many people have actually changed the wiper configuration so that when the wipers park, they actually park on the passenger side. The reason they've done that is because perceivably it can add a hindrance for visibility when it's actually parked on the driver's side. Although I have never had a problem with this because they obviously park quite low. But some people nevertheless do actually change the configuration. So obviously with those cars, it's hard to know whether it's right-hand drive or left-hand drive. Then moving on to the engineering of this vehicle. These vehicles are commonly detailed as driving and feeling like they've been engineered out of a single ingot of steel. Now this is well explained and well advertised by just opening the door and closing it. There's only one car that produces that sound and it's a 911. Moving on to the placement of the pedal box. As I mentioned in one of my previous videos, the pedal box is hinged from the floor as opposed to being hinged off the top. Now this is quite a different design to many other vehicles that are manufactured around this era. And also this pedal box is actually fitted slightly at an angle to the left. And again, as I mentioned in one of my earlier videos, it causes problems with some people who have bad backs because you have to do a slight twist to the left-hand side because of the pedals being fixed on the left-hand side. This was designed this way um, because the car was actually designed as a left-hand drive car. So to move the car and to change the configuration of the car to a right-hand drive necessitated having the pedals slightly to the left. Moving on to the layout and the features and the configuration of those features within the car. Again, as mentioned in one of my earlier videos, the layout and of the controls within the interior of a 993 are very haphazard. They don't really fall to hand. And for example, the heater and air conditioning um, controls are behind, visibly behind the steering wheel. So you have to have a leap of faith when you're trying to action any of these controls while you're driving. They don't really come to hand and they're not very well labeled. Unless you know what the controls do, it's very hard when you first get into the car to actually know what your you know what actually actions what within the vehicle um, i had that feeling when i first bought the 993 but obviously i know the car very well now having had the car for 12 years since 2008. this is the same of course in addition for the actual controls you've got the standard indicator and wiper controls um, why they implemented plastic for these controls who knows that's what they decided to do in one of the top vehicles of its era. Now the last feature which is well loved by all 911 air-cooled aficionados is the fact that this is the last of the air-cooled 911s. Subsequent to this there was the 964 then other vehicles earlier on in the trait. 35 years of engineering went into this engine. But downstream from this, they moved across to the water-cooled engine to improve emissions. And the reason why they had to move across to a water-cooled engine was yes, to improve emissions, but that was because they needed to increase power. To increase power, they had to be able to increase the number of valves in the cylinder head. That then in turn would increase the amount of heat and they needed to water cool the engine to reduce the heat. The 959 model was produced, I believe, around the 1980s. And that was very innovative because that had more valves in the cylinder head and they had to increase the cooling by using water cooling. Now they used water cooling in the 959 just for the cylinder heads, not for the cylinder block. So thank you for watching the quirks and features of my 993S and in effect the air-cooled 911s as well. As you can see, there's many interesting features that make this 993 one of the most loved, if not the most loved, 911 ever made and definitely the most loved air-cooled 911. This is the seventh episode in the series. There's still a few more videos to come yet. So please subscribe to make sure that you'll receive all future incoming videos for this series on my 911 type 993 and for all other videos that I'll be producing as well, whether it be for this car or whether it be vlogs or for other content.